Uh, this fall, uh, Bonnie kindly invited me to give the uh, keynote address at um, the graduation in Mesa for our colleagues, our classmates uh, in the Wilkes program. So I thought here tonight, in the depth of winter, on the eve of the apocalypse, <laughs> I would bring us a, a little Arizona sun. And here's the talk that I gave to that Wilkes crowd. Proud, joyful, tender, valorous. These are the words that pass through the mind of Gabriel Conroy, the protagonist of James Joyce's story, The Dead, as Gabriel descends the staircase from his successful speech at his aunt's Christmas dinner. With his beautiful wife, Greta, on his arm, he looks forward to the night at the Gresham Hotel where his literary labors will be rewarded. And so we may feel today proud of our accomplishment joyful in our abilities, valorous in our hopes, and tender toward our own literary labors. Like Gabriel, we hope that our work as writers, the planning, drafting, shaping, and, re and revising, are rewarded by friends, by readers, by publishers and reviewers, by, might we dare to dream, the world. But as you may recall, when Gabriel's carriage arrives at his hotel and he and Greta enter the well-appointed Georgian room and he signals the porter to snuff the candle and he calls, Greta, dear, his thoughts of conquest are suddenly dashed and he is confronted by a specter, Greta's memory of a lover from her past a boy named Michael Fury, who died long ago at the age of 17 for love of her. Conjured by a lamenting Irish ballad, The Lass of Ogram, sung at the fete, the ghost of Michael Fury now stands between Gabriel and his triumph. His hopes are thwarted, but with this ending, a new story, one in which we ourselves are invited to partake, now opens. Pride, joy, tenderness, valor. Success is wonderful, but ultimately it's predictable. All happy families, Tolstoy tell us, tells us, are alike, but every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. Great writing, never ends in triumph. In fact, great writing doesn't begin until our original intention has been snuffed out and we are confronted with the ineffable specter of the other, the unintended, as Gabriel is confronted by the presence of the dead. This year, we have witnessed in our presidential election the thwarting of expected success on a global scale. Whatever your political views, it's hard not to think about the personal consequences of failing so grandly in public. I think we know what Donald Trump is feeling, but what about Hillary Clinton? For writers, failure is just so much more interesting than success. Yeats puts it this way in a poem called To a Friend Whose Work Has Come to Nothing. Now all the truth is out. Be secret and take defeat from any brazen throat. For how can you compete being honor bred with one who were it proved he lies, were shamed not in his own nor in his neighbor's eyes. Bred to a harder thing than triumph. Turn away. And like a laughing string upon mad fingers play amid a place of stone, be secret and exult. For of all things known, that is the most difficult. 
Amazing how Yeats unearthed the theme in the rhyme. Exalt and difficult. I imagine him strolling the fields of Cool Park in Ballylee, his boots rhythmically rustling the gla grass that glistened under the slanting Galway sun, and tuning in his mind's ear this sound allegiance. Exult. Difficult. Poems and all writing don't come out of intention, but out of surrendering to the felicities of language, what Finn McCool, the mythic Irish hero, calls the music of what happens. The difficult thing that Gabriel Conroy must accomplish is to put aside pride, joy, valor, perhaps even tenderness, and exult secretly in deep soul. When I say that writing begins with failure, I mean only that it begins there. What happens next is what counts. Most people give up. I think that those who make writing a life's vocation aren't necessarily the most talented. They are merely the most willing to experience profound and continuous defeat. As W.D. Snodgrass used to say when asked if someone should become a poet, not if he can be happy doing anything else. The prevailing response to failure is resistance. And our response to that response is also tinged with resistance. As teachers, coaches, parents, bosses, what do we say? Try harder. Pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Push, push, push. Resist. But confronted with the specter of adolescent love from long ago, Gabriel Conroy does not resist. He doesn't rage against his wife or against fate. Instead, Joyce tells us that generous tears filled Gabriel's eyes. Thinking of Michael Fury's passion, he says, he had never felt like that toward any woman, but he knew that such a feeling must be love. Today at our graduation from the Graduate Creative Writing Program at Wilkes University in Mesa, Arizona in the fall of the year of our Lord 2016, I do not praise resistance. I say we must immerse ourselves in failure. We must drown in failure. We must fail exultantly, extravagantly, repeatedly. As the American poet Paisley Rechtal writes, I am going to fail. I am going to fail cartilage and plastic, camera and arrow. I am going to fail binoculars and conjugations, all the accompanying music. I am failing. I must fail. I can fail. I have failed the way some women throw themselves into lovers' arms or out trains, fingers crossed and skirts billowing behind them, to succumb, to be destroyed, to die completely, wrecked all rights, to fail the way I failed in every particular sense of myself, in every new and beautiful light. Writing does not aspire to mere success. We cannot write ourselves into deep soul. There is always a yearning space between our feelings and the alphabet that encodes thought. For me, walking like Gabriel Conroy into the suburbs of old age, the irony is that Gabriel's confession of failure is the most refined and intense feeling. His lifelong love for Greta is far deeper than and Michael Fury's youthful passion. In fact, great writing may not be passionate at all. It may be that for all our pride and joy and valor and tenderness, we create only rough drafts. And it is not until they pass through the phantasmagoria of the revenant that they are fully realized. For all our labors, I'm here to say that writing is not a personal activity. It is a soulful receptivity. Art is the impression left upon the mind when all writing has been effaced. As darkness falls, Gabriel does not turn toward Dublin's light. He yields his pride, joy, valor, and tenderness to the ghost of Michael Fury dripping, uh, standing under a dripping tree. His soul had approached that region where dwell the vast hopes, the vast hosts of the dead. Today, 
as for Gabriel. The time has come for us to set out on our journey westward. Gabriel's journey takes him toward the wild Atlantic surf, toward his wife's secret past, toward the poor and forgotten and oppressed, toward sleep, toward death. Our journey is a soul-nurturing sojourn, one that cannot be forecast or controlled. It requires that we allow every detail and nuance and feature of the world to pass before our eyes, and at the same time, allow the shimmer to fade to a snowdrift. It requires us to attend beneath the markings we make on page or screen to the thrum of sleep, of death, of community, of wonder. Yes, the snow was general all over Ireland. It was falling on every part of the dark central plain, on the treeless hills, softly falling upon the bog of Allen and farther westward, falling softly into the dark, mutinous Shannon waves. Today, in the sun of Mesa, Arizona, and in the dark of defeated Pennsylvania, on the eve of disaster in our benighted land, I invoke the ghost of Michael Fury, suckled in the imagination of Gabriel Conroy, conceived in the story by the great James Joyce to touch us all, softly murmuring every particular note, whispering into being each minute shard, casting every shade and nuance, and at the same time falling below by the agency of rhythmic utterance to the powerful unity without which all writing is mere words. It was falling too. On every part of the lonely churchyard on the hill where Michael Fury lay buried, it lay thickly drifted on the crooked crosses and the headstones, on the spears of the little gate on the barren thorns. His soul swooned slowly as he heard the snow falling faintly through the universe and faintly falling like the descent of their last end upon all the living and the dead. Thank you.